Hello everybody, this is the Johnny Mayor, and welcome to the beginning of a very special Let's Play. And this is going to be kind of a blast from the past, a return to the roots of my channel as I embark on the second year of Let's Playing. And that is a walkthrough of the first game in the Final Fantasy series, Final Fantasy 1. And I am going to be playing the Dawn of Souls version of this game which includes a couple of different aspects. You get the original game, Final Fantasy. You get a beastery that covers both games, and you also get Final Fantasy II, which I will be getting to eventually. But I chose this version because it has a couple of extra elements later on in the game in terms of side quests and optional material that uh, are not in any of the other games. So I do want to show all of that off. And I also did want to show off kind of my new upscaler to high definition. So hopefully that is making an impact on the visuals that you're seeing. Now the basic class you can use in this game is a warrior, a thief, a white mage, and a black mage. But you are not limited to that. You can actually change classes. Warrior is your basic tank, uses swords and heavy armor. A thief is your basic speed class, and so they influence things like preemptive attacks and the ability to escape from battle. A red mage is a combination class that allows you to use both black and white magic, and they can actually equip swords and some of the heavier armor. A monk is basically a bare knuckle group. You really don't have to do much with them, so they're a very cheap party that becomes very powerful as the game advances. White mage is very basic, you know, that's your healer, so they're going to learn all of the advanced healing spells, and they are essential for this game if you're going to do the extra content. And then the last class is the Black Mage, and that is the class that has sort of your basic damaging magic. They're somewhat useful, they're really not useful in the original version, the NES version, because of the fact that you have very limited uses of um, spells. And so my basic party, for starters, is two warriors and two red mages. That gives you good protection, good attack power, and a nice mix of magic. But for this Let's Play, we're actually going to be doing a different party. I want to show off some different stuff. So I'm going to be doing a warrior, what used to be known as a fighter, a thief, a red mage, and also a white mage. And this is a good all-purpose party for taking on the main game and also the secondary game. Now, my characters are going to be named after good friends of mine. And we're going to be going on a journey with some dapper gentlemen. And so we have our warrior, who is named Jester. We have our thief, who is named Nakuso. My favorite class has always been the red mage class. I like the versatility that it brings to the table. So of course I'm going to be naming my red mage after myself. And that is Johnny. And lastly, my white mage will be named after my friend, Avok. So, that is my main party. That's the party of light warriors that we're going to be taking on this game with. And hopefully you will join me as we take on the original Final Fantasy game. And I'll shut up as we watch this awesome intro scene.
that is about it for the storyline. We have our Light Warriors, as they used to be called, now called Warriors of Light. I'm gonna turn on the B button dash and increase our message speed. You can mess around with the window color, but I'm not gonna be doing that. I like the default blue. We don't have any items to start the game. We also don't have any key items. And our equipment is very basic. Just a knife, a staff, and some clothing. Now, unlike the NES version, they actually kind of reduce the requirements of this game. So you level up faster, and you get more money. Now, there's no front and back row like in other Final Fantasies, but you can change the location of your party members, and that is important. So I'll talk about that in a little while. But let's head to the town here and talk to some people. We are in Cornelia, the city of dreams, apparently. So we have an inn here. In the NES version, this is how you save your game. You have to sleep at an inn. And we have a basic, you know, little sagely advice givers here that will tell you about the game if you've never played it before. Now this will be a complete walkthrough, so I'm going to guide you through the entire game from start to finish. So feel free to talk to these guys if you want to. But otherwise, I will tell you all the important stuff that you need to know. And then we have a little dancer here. I would love to dance, but we have stuff to do. So we have a weapon and armor shop here. The armor shop, of course, with the shield. The weapon shop with the sword. And again, unlike in the NES version, you actually get little indicators of whether or not the armor is an improvement over the stuff you currently have. So I'm going to buy a couple chainmails for my main party members and then a leather armor for my thief. And uh, basically in terms of weapons, for some reason in this game, white mages can equip hammers. <laughs> Not sure why, but it doesn't significantly increase their attack power. And then we're going to equip rapiers on the rest of my characters. So just optimize all of your characters and that should work out fine. Now in the NES version, you do have to go in and manually equip each of your characters and make sure there's a little E next to the item and their equipment screen. But for this version, again, everything is made a little bit easier, kind of in line with the later games in the series. Now we also have a white and a black magic shop. You have to buy magic in this game. So we have Cure, basic Cure spell, heals HP. We have Dia, which is called Hurt in the NES version, which hurts undead. Protect, also known as Fog in the NES version, which increases defense and Blink, which increases evasion. Now, each character can only learn three spells at a particular level, because magic has different levels, as you can see. So basically, I want Protect, Cure, and Dia. And then for black magic, you have Fire and Thunder, which are your basic elemental spells. You have a Sleep spell, which actually hits all enemies in a party. And then Focus, which is not very helpful. It increases your ability to hit enemies. So I'm going to equip Sleep, Fire, and Thunder. Sleep is a good mob control spell. It'll actually work on a lot of different characters in this game, so it's a worthwhile spell to invest in. We learn a little bit about Sage Lucan and his prophecy about the Light Warriors. Basically the king is looking for us because the princess has been kidnapped. And so we're going to hear about that in this little town here. It is Lady Sarah, or because in the original, it was limited to only four letters. It's Sarah without an H. This is a treatment center, so if you die or if you're afflicted with a status ailment, you can go to that church and get healed. We learn about the town of Provoca, which will be an area we have to go to later in the game. And we have an item shop. Now, the original game did not include Phoenix Down, so the only way to recover your characters if they were knocked out was to go to a church and get them revived. But again, this version is a little bit easier than the original. So let's talk to this guard kind of keeping us from being able to leave town and he will take us directly to the king. Which is why I came to town first. Speed things up a little bit. We do carry the crystals. And here they are. Well, I guess. And uh, this Chancellor character, again, is not in the original. 
added to kind of make this a little bit more clear. The NES version, he just says, Save my princess from Garland in the Northeast. Or Northwest, I mean. So, they're giving you a lot more of a backstory here. They kind of fleshed out the story. Not quite as generic as the original, but still not too much to the story. Not really any character development. But our first target is Garland, a former knight of the Kingdom of Cornelia. We're going to be coming for you, Garland. To try to save Princess Sarah from the Chaos Shrine. Eh, I'm not too worried about him. I think we can do it. And uh, are we going to get a reward for saving her? Stuff doesn't come cheap or free here. We're mercenaries. Yes, he will give us a bridge which will allow us to continue in the world. Otherwise, we're stuck to this little island. Alright, we'll do it. You can count on us. The dapper gentlemen are on the case. So let's talk to a couple people in this kingdom. Most of the guards tell you the exact same thing, so don't worry about them. You can head down here to the south, and we actually have the queen, who has shut herself in a room, or locked herself, as it said in the original. And then you can just go right through the door, so not a very good lock. Her name was Jane, J-A-N-E. All right, we'll do that for you, don't worry. And there was actually a little bit of a glitch here. There was a character up here in this area that was not present in terms of their sprite that you could access. So that was kind of weird in the NES version. And this is Sarah's sister. Don't worry, little girl. We'll help her out. All right, so, as is the case in any JRPG, what do you think we have to do next? Well, grind. Grind experience. So let's go into a battle here with some goblins or imps, the basic class in this game. So, we have an attack ability. If you are a mage class, you can also use magic if you have it equipped. As you can see, my red mage can use black magic because I bought that for them. But we're going to attack because they can equip swords. Items allows you to access your items that you have, or it's called drink in the original, which is weird. Equipment allows you to access your equipped items, it's called item in the original, again kind of confusing. And then flee allows each individual member to try to run from battle, and that can be helpful if you're fighting really tough enemies over and over. And then my white mage has access to all of their white spells. Now formation. Characters in the upper part of your party, so my warrior there and my red mage, are more likely to get attacked by the enemy. So my warrior is most likely to get attacked, which is why I have him in the top slot. So he is a 50% chance of getting attacked. As you can see, we only need 8 more experience points to level up. That is much less than the original game. The second character in your party has a 25% chance of getting attacked, and then your bottom two have a 12.5% chance of getting attacked. So we're going to go up to level 2. Now you can take out Garland at level 1, that is possible, um, in this version of the game especially, but also in the NES version. But it is good to gain at least one level before taking them on, and that is because you will get what's called a strong level up. And so this game has two types of levels, strong or major levels, and weak or lesser levels, I guess. And so at a strong level up, you get a lot of HP, about 25, and at a weak one, you only get about one to five. Now you're gonna get stat boosts at both of them, but you're gonna notice for level two, all of my characters except my red mage actually got strong level ups. My red mage got a weak one. That is, again, part of this game. So I'm going to go heal. 
at the end. And again, this is how you save in the original version of the game. So let's do that. On the original, basically the Red Mage was a decent class all around, and the intelligence stat was kind of bugged a little bit. And so basically, Red Mages did a mage class about as well as another mage. So that's why it's really good to use them in the original version. So we're going to head up here, and I'm going to be cutting out random battles that are not new ones. So here we have an extra segment of the game that is unique to this version, and that is the Earth Grift area or cave. Shrine, I guess. And this weird dwarf who talks with a really weird accent. And we access this by beating this enemy up here that is encased in kind of this shrine of stone. So we will come back and take that on later in the game. For now, we can't do much with that. But let's head towards the Chaos Shrine. Some more goblins. Alright, so this is where Garland is, but before we take him on, let's do some exploring. Stupid ambushes. So now this is a group of enemies that your Dia or Hurt spell is going to be very helpful against because it hits all enemies and it does damage against undead. Now they're not super tough, so we can just take them out with regular attacks. I'm not super worried about that. But if you do want to use your Dia spell, feel free. Now, something that was improved about this version as well is the fact that you can just attack all of your party members against one enemy, and if you do beat that enemy, we're already leveling up to level 3 here, then what will happen is you will automatically target another enemy in the group. In the original version, if you targeted all on one enemy and that enemy died, your characters would still attack the enemy that had passed away. And so all of your attacks after the enemy died would become ineffective and not do anything. Look at this encounter rate. Ridiculous. We have a ghoul, the kind of evolved or palette swap form of the zombie. But we want to pick up a couple of items that are around this area. We have a leather cap. So I'm going to equip that on my red mage. Give him a little bit of a boost in defense power. So I have some survivability. And then if we head up here to the north, we're going to have more battles, of course. But we're also going to have two more chests, a potion, and a tent. So a potion heals HP, and a tent you can use on the world map to restore, say, HP and MP. Now there are no save points in dungeons in this game, so you have to restore stuff on the world map. But that is it for my first episode, viewers. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and we will continue against Garland in my next episode. So long, and see you next time.